my previous tiny keyboard was designed for direct soldering to a Raspberry Pi Pico, so it made sense at the time for ergonomics, in air quotes, was to use the largest tactile switches that fit the given footprint. However, there are smaller switches available. I also took a few points of feedback from the DIY hardware community, among them ditching the micro USB of the Pico in favor of USB Type-C and adding back the right alt modifier key, which is apparently critical for entering Polish characters. Starting with a blank sheet design led me to a custom RP2040 circuit and a four-layer PCB stack up. To be fair, the prior design was also four layers two in the keyboard traces and two layers on the Pico board. The end result is a keyboard with a cross section about the size of a quarter if it were wearing a USB Type-C port as a backpack. The PCB is reduced from 51 by 21 millimeters of the prior design to 29 by 16 and a quarter millimeters in this version. Design compromises include moving from a square ground pad underneath the RP2040 to a circular one in order to fit in some additional traces beneath the RP2040, where the circular ground pad and the square solder paste mask layer intersect, it might be cropped back to a square anyway by the PCB assembler, given that this layer is ostensibly what they use to cut the stencil. Some very tightly placed vias occupy two input pins and the four layer stack up itself. I wonder if it's possible to get back to a two layer PCB with a little bit better spacing, especially moving the RP2040 to a more central location on the back of the board. I don't love where the right alt key landed either, specifically it being to the right of enter. It looked better positioned in the EDA software than in the render, but after seeing the 3D view, it's probably best rotated 90 degrees, placed just above the up arrow, and then enter can be shifted over a bit to the right. There are also a reduced number of decoupling capacitors, although an increased overall capacitance due to using much higher values. Beginning to implement power integrity advice from Bogotin at all in the myth of three capacitor values from Signal Integrity Journal, which is free to read at a link in the description. Basically, the advice boils down to, in the age of surface mount parts, for power circuits, you might as well use the largest capacitor value that's available in the component body size you have to work with. Here, 0204 size components and sticking within the JLC PCB basic parts library, you might as well use the 10 microfarad value in place of the one microfarad or 0.1 microfarad, AKA 100 nanofarad value. Although considering two-sided assembly at JLC PCB means you can't do their economic PCBA, that is to say standard PCBA means 0201 parts are also on the table. Given the two-sided assembly, cost is steep relative to the components at around $25 per PCB in small batches of five. The ubiquitous Pro Micro keyboard PCB or the Adafruit KB2040, link in the description, could also be options for direct solder. The footprint of either at around 1.3 inches wide is just a little wider than this assembled version, but still smaller than the Pico footprint. Using one of these would reduce the assembly needed to just the key switch matrix and the firmwares for these boards are already worked out. So this is probably the way to go for small stuff like wearables so you can live out any residual calculator PDA watch fantasies you might have. The PCB design, build materials, and pick and place files are available at links in the description. Pros and cons are as noted earlier. If anyone has this or something similar assembled, I'd recommend asking your PCB fabricator to have a look at the paste mask layer under the RP2040 to okay it. Perhaps sprinkling in a couple more decoupling caps close to the RP2040 if you can, and double checking each route as I have not built this intermediate version. Until next time.